about the connect -ason. So first, uh, thank you everybody for joining. So um, the IG, IT infrastructure domain um, offered to um, give you updates about what it's going on in the in the technical committee uh, within this domain. Um, so John and, and Oliver will uh, give you a, an introduction uh, later. Um, so I just remind you that the registration to the IHG Europe Connectison uh, that will be held in Trieste uh, first week of June are still open and will be till the end of this month. Uh, so that's a unique opportunity for you to test your IETI implementation. Uh, you have a three steps uh, process this year where you first uh, register uh, in ClickUp to receive your contract and, and your invoice. And in parallel, you can register, you should register your, your system in Gazelle Test Management. So we know what you want to test and we can build your test plan for the upcoming, upcoming event. Um, and then obviously you will uh, you will need to um, also register the list of, of attendees. Um, I have also been informed that the list of hotels should now be available on um, um, the Connect Us on web page. So you have here the link uh, with all the information, including the, the link to ClickUp and, and the link to Gazette. So that's connectason.ihe-europe.net uh, and then you have the connectason uh, 2024 um, tab where you have all the information there including the the fees and, and the link to the various forms. Um, so now uh, John and Oliver I don't know uh, who of you is uh, speaking first, but the, the floor is of yours. Thank you very much, Angel. I will take over the screen. John, maybe do you want to introduce yourself shortly? Sure, um, I'm John Murky, uh, one of the co-chairs of the IT Infrastructure Technical Committee um, and a consultant with Bylight. Thanks, and I'm also one of the co-chairs of the Technical Committee of ITI, um, working for Artis in Switzerland, and uh, we are looking forward to show you this hour uh, what we in the ITI domain have done uh, since the last time we have spoken this a year ago, and uh, give first a short introduction what the IT infrastructure domain it is, what it covers in terms of business cases, what is new since the last Connectathon, and we will dive into a bit what we think are the hot profiles, what are the hot profiles, then really we will see what we have at the Connectathon floors, but give you a few um, introductions and then we should have enough time for uh, Q&A at the uh, end of the session. The, IT infrastructure domain defines uh, interoperable infrastructure for secure sharing of health information. And there are a variety of use cases, but it's rarely visible. So we are more behind. Maybe it's changed. It's the sharing IPS profile in the future. But um, for a lot of these things, the profiles are really in the infrastructure part. Um, ITI was established a long time ago by HIMSS and RSNA um, in order to address these use cases when we cross multiple clinical domains and rely on this common IT infrastructure. Um, you find our home on the internet where the technical framework resides. You see here, so um, the IT infrastructure domain with the technical framework is um, everything published on the website with these different volumes where we have the profile definitions um, and then going into the further detailed specification. Um, to give you here a bit a quick overview what we have in terms of profile um, in the base IT infrastructure 
domain is a big part what handles about cross enterprise document sharing, um, how you can share, um, share documents um, within uh, and across organizations. And you see also here that we have already dependencies. If you want to do cross enterprise document sharing, you need to have other profiles that you are dependent on, like audit trail and node authentication that you have secure communication between the different partners. You rely on consistent time. A lot of things when you do document sharing handles around identifying the patient or querying the patient. So these profiles are um, quite dependent on each other. And uh, this is not a complete list. We have a lot of new profiles also with the um, upcoming fire standards. There are a, um, is quite some activity. When we look what is tested at the connectatons at the most, we see also a bit the same profiles, consistent time, audit trail and node authentication, XDS and mobile access to health documents, which is uh, um, the buyer interfaces to this cross enterprise clinical document sharing systems. So there are kind of a, uh, a much more profiles from the ITA domain tested, but this I would say is currently about the top four. Um, so the ITI technical framework follows the standard um, setup of uh, the general um, technical frameworks. So we have different integration profiles, and for these uh, integration profiles, we have then different actors which can fulfill this role in the integration profile and the transactions which describe the interactions between the actors in this profile. In earlier times, these were published as PDF documents, but now in the ITI domain, we not 100%, but we are getting close and closer there. Uh, they are published electronically um, as either web pages like we see here in the IUA profile. So this is not a PDF file anymore, but uh, we publish them now. Um, the new ones or convert the new ones into either a HTML accessible form. And, and I think the most important part for newer profiles, which are based on the HL7 FIRE standard, they are published as FIRE implementation guides. Oh, yeah, they follow the similar document structure. Um, you are familiar from uh, the general IAG documentation, but you have it also available not only as a textual description, but you have then also all the conformance resources which come together with a FIRE implementation guide. So this means we have uh, conformance resources like structure definitions, then we have the terminology with value sets and code system and concept maps, or if needed, extensions with it provided. And another important thing, you have also examples which explain the use of this uh, IAG transactions and profiles. And another advantage of that approach is that uh, we can also test the validity of the content um, during the connectathon because since this is are now computable rules, we can also validate if the content is correct according to those profiles. How these profiles are developed within uh, uh, IHE ITI is that we have a planning committee and a technical committee so as a member of IHE <coughs> And if you're then a member of ITI, you can propose work items. Uh, we have monthly planning meetings where these work items are afterwards prioritized, scheduled and planned according to the current capacity. And for um, the different topics we plan after bi-weekly telcos where we work on this work item. And uh, four times a year we have a face to face or virtual meeting where we concentrate of bringing these work items further and hopefully finish it. And if that's possible, we will have a public comment phase first where um, all the members can bring in comments, how they should be 
uh, if there is any improvement or comments uh, to the profiles necessary and this public comment phase is successful we go to a trial implementation um, which you are hopefully mostly familiar with it so we have a profile it's mentioned trial implementation after a few trial implementation phase then it can come also to final text um, this is also tracked uh, publicly so if you are interested in the details uh, you can also look what you are working on if you follow the link down here and with this I would afterwards hand or I would hand off over now to John which will tell you a bit what the IPI domain has done this year do you want to share the screen or do you should no. I tap further yeah if you, you can just go through the slides we don't, we don't need to transition. So um, <clears throat> first up, we, we have done some revisions. Um, the list here is um, revisions that really fall in the camp of um, we've processed and validated change proposals and we've integrated those change proposals or uh, we've received uh, feedback or, or observed, um, you know, some some technical uh, fixes, typos, or or misspelled things, or or what have you. Um, so these are these have been revised, but there isn't any any intended um, uh, new functionality in them. Um, but it is important to to see that, and we always make sure that we are are putting the dates of revisions up there. Um, so uh, you know, be aware of that. So next slide. So this is the list of the things that we've done some some more major uh, revisions on since August, um, and and some of these were in August. So you know I'm taking you know I'm, I'm taking double credit uh, for some of these. So, so um, some of the new profiles, the sharing of IPS, something I have promoted in a few places, um, is a implementation guide. Um, I forget which ones of these. Uh, we have in the slide deck. I shouldn't go too deep into something that's here, right? Da, 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 da. Did we go in? Yeah, we have. We have so some of these we do have uh, some more details later. But sharing of uh, of IPS is predominantly, you know, how to show that IPS can already uh, be supported over the document sharing uh, infrastructures, XDS and XCA and the like. Um, document subscriptions for mobile is a new, uh, brand new uh, profile that is um, uh, soon to be published formally um, on doing subscriptions, using Fire subscriptions for uh, notification when a document is uh, updated or created or, or added to folders and such. Uh, privacy consent on Fire is a implementation guide explaining how to use the Fire consent um and uh, have that Im impact the accessibility of uh, data um, we have converted so the new fire implementation guides the npfs and the mxde implementation guide were available in pdf before um, we converted these to implementation guide publisher so that's kind of that that thing that that oliver was showing you before um, predominantly there isn't an isn't uh, a major change in these but um, what during the conversion we did have to uh, uh, do some some fixes because the implementation guide infrastructure checks your work and we found some things that weren't exactly uh, correct um the biggest thing is with the mxde we brought the provenance profiling into mxde uh it used to be only over in pdqm um, so that way uh, mxde can be used potentially more broadly and then um, another one that is just been uh, released soon to be published in you know probably a week or two is an update to pdqm adding dollar match. Um, so we'll go a little deeper in the next couple of slides. Next. Oh yeah, uh, so that was the work that we just completed. Um, and uh, for the next quarter, 
Uh, we are going to be uh, continuing to work on scheduling for mobile, which is an implementation guide that looks to offer um, scheduling uh, to patients and potentially uh, caregivers uh, so that they can uh, uh, look for open slots and schedule an appointment, um, those kinds of use cases. Uh, we are also looking at the impact on the whole portfolio of ITI um, uh, profiles on the sex and gender um, uh, implementation guides um, that have been put together by some cross standards organizations. Um, a new work item we're going to be working on is we have digital signatures, document digital signatures profile, DSIG. Um, it uses XML signature and there is an interest to use JSON signature instead of XML signature. So we'll probably be adding a new option um, that one can select, um, but functionally it's the same thing. How do you sign a document in a document sharing environment? We're also looking at doing uh, some workflows around finance and insurance. Um, this is predominantly interesting, uh, interest from the developing world, but it could also be um, an interest from other worlds. The idea of how do you uh, handle the, uh, the, the billing and payment side of healthcare. And then because we've done so much in the past couple of years, uh, we do need to update our HIE white paper and probably our MHDS. So there's some uh, updates that need to be done just because of the vast amount of things that we've done. So next slide. All right, so this one I think is, is really important. Um, so we have just updated PDQM to add a new capability using dollar match operation that's defined within FHIR. Um, this capability is um, really more aligned with the original PDQ uh, use case in that the, the client just simply provides in the operation all that it knows about the subject. Um, and it's up and then the server, because it's an operation, gets to apply algorithms and matching and uh, uh, weighting and such to looking at the information it was given and provide back a best match. Um, this is, is not to replace the existing search capability that is in PDQM, but it's really an alternative because search um is is as it uh, you know as it's defined within restful here are the parameters give me the the thing that directly matches those parameters so the search mechanism uh puts more of the responsibility on the client and the server can't do anything but you know uh, match the the values as they are defined so that's a difference here. Uh, dollar match gives the servers more ability to apply algorithms and MPI and and um, uh, fuzzy logic. Um, so that's a new capability within PDQM. Well, we're looking forward to getting some testing on that. Next slide. Um, I'm just going to mention uh, the sharing of IPS in short because for the most part this was something that we did introduce before, but the sharing of IPS takes two different worlds. One is that IPS is, is a new uh, implementation guide uh, from HL7. Specifically, we're pointing at the FHIR version of IPS, and we have document sharing. Um, both of these are, are, are rather compatible. The existing document sharing profiling is absolutely you know, content agnostic, content preserving. So it's really very academic to just simply say, oh, well, this IPS can be carried over XDS or XCA or what have you. Um, the sharing of IPS is, is quite literally just simply saying, yes, you can do that. Um, it is a little bit more than that in that it does try to uh, introduce the concepts to an audience that might not be as familiar as many um, who are familiar with the IHE methodologies. So it, it does have a little bit more instruction in it, uh, but it, it, it effectively boils down to, yes, it's okay to put IPS through XDS. Here is the format code. Here is the actor requirements. 
Next slide. Um, another one that um, you know I'll, I'll do in short, but um, I want to bring it forward because um, uh, the patient consent on fire is is a new area uh, for us. Um, it is in some ways similar to BPPC um, and APPC from the the uh, XDS days, um, but it's really far more powerful because the fire consent resource. Uh, has far more capabilities built into it. <clears throat> so what this uh, implementation guide sets up is that there are, are systems who are responsible for getting the consent from the patient, um, given some uh, rules, base rules that uh, are presented to the to the patient, and in uh, encapsulating any conditions that are acceptable. Um, so that actor is indeed responsible for a lot of the the user interaction with the with the the patient. It doesn't describe how that uh, that ceremony uh, happens. It just says, well, the result of that ceremony gets sent over to a consent repository, and it and those uh, uh, consent resources have to match a, a given um, uh, profile, and then. Um, for each of the patterns, there's uh, a, a set of different patterns of consent in here, intermediate, um, basic, and also advanced. For each of those patterns, it, ident it defines a methodology for which how would that, you know, that pattern be exposed in an OAuth token. And we have an OAuth extension to carry along residual rules that the uh, uh, resource server might have to enforce. So this is really a marrying of the fire privacy uh, consent with OAuth uh, enforcement is profiling both of those. Next slide. That was your last slide. And Aha! I will take over the... And I get the hand it back to Oliver. <laughs> Thank you. So these up uh, M uh, another mobile version is uh, uh, the mobile version of the document subscription we already had in the XDS world. So um, these are the same use cases. You want to get notified if somebody publishes a document or if somebody would create a folder um, in the XDS sharing or MHDS sharing environment, and then that you can get notified. And uh, for this profile, uh, this is this uh, subscription for mobile. It has been based on the upcoming subscription um, workflow, general workflow, which has been defined by HL7, and they created the so-called subscription backport IG for version four because this subscription topic will only be available with Fire Release five. But with this backport version. Um, we can use all these features in Fire Release 4, and currently all Fire implementation guides from, I don't know if all, but at least from uh, ITI, the most um, implementation guides are still on Release 4. This was also something coming out, um, or out on the public comment phase. Uh, at the first initial version from DSAP-M was made in R4B, but um, now for this published version, it's still in the build, but it will be published in the next uh, one, two weeks. Uh, probably um, it will be in the R4 version. So it will profile this subscription topic resource as a, uh, as a basic resource. Um, you have then the different subscription status, status which are parameter resource, and can use that afterwards to um, uh, define these use cases like uh, that you get notified when you get published documents in the sharing environment. Okay, that was the new and hopefully hot profiles for the upcoming Connectathon, which is uh, coming up uh, very soon, early summer in Trieste. And uh, 
if you have now any questions or comments about those profiles or about anything else about the IAG ITI domain, uh, uh, please uh, go ahead, John, and I uh, will be happily taking your questions. No questions. Don't see any. We, we need a first question. So see what those will follow. Uh, I've noted that PCF I, is not yet I've available for registration in Gazelle. Should I add it? Uh, it should be. Um, okay. I thought we... It's it's in Gazelle, but it's not selected for the session. I will add it. Um, yeah. So everybody has a chance to join. Excellent. Okay. Oh, we have. Okay, Roel. Ro uh, Roel. Roel, sorry. Okay. The, well, I'm not sure if you can answer the question. Um, have you ever did a search between the European IPS and the international IPS from HL7? And the differences uh, between those? Yes, there was um, a presentation during the HL7 Europe work group meeting. Oh, I think, uh, uh, Aliotis, do you want to answer the question? <laughs> I think you are the, <laughs> the, I would did be you do the presentation? <laughs> yeah, I, would, I, would I think you're the right to, person yes. to answer the question. <laughs> All right, uh, I will. Okay, so. Right. There has been um, some work which we have done under the European funded project eHealth for You, um, mm -hmm. which does do a comparison between the European patient summary and the international patient summary. It also outlines how to profile um, the European patient summary within FIRE, as of course you know the European patient summary is in CDA. Um, yep. Within the current context, we do have um, an article that um, we're publishing within the HL7 um, Athens Marathon um, newsletter that's coming out, which does highlight a few of these differences. Um, more importantly, we will be releasing a paper on the subject um, in the coming months, which will detail values and, and will provide details of the work that has been done. Um, so yes, there's definitely the work that has been done and work that will continue to be done on that on that uh, point. Okay, and how do we get those articles? Uh, will they be pu published on the HL7 international uh, site or? I know that um, HL7 Europe is publishing it. Um, so you could speak to Katarina or we'll speak to Giorgio. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, we do have on chat.fi.org, um, so on Zulip, we do have the the materials, including the presentations um, that was delivered at the Connectathon. So you can find them on chatstoppie.org. I can post them in the in the chat over here if that's useful. Yeah, please, please. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I don't have any other questions. Maybe now other people will. <laughs> Raise some hands. Yes, we have uh, Marcus. You're on you mute. You're, mute. You're muted. Okay, thank you for, <laughs> for the hint. Uh, now, there will be possible that in one affinity domains can be implemented. Uh, some older versions from a profile with HL7.2 and also uh, HL7.5. Uh, uh, how should we handle uh, different versions within one affinity domain? Should all participation in institution change at the same moment? Or is it possible to to R 
simultaneous implement implementation from different versions in the in the same affinity domain. Yeah, so you're referring to the patient lookup, PDQ. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's kind of unfortunate, you know. Uh, uh, little background, you know, for everybody, uh, you know, one of the, the the whole reason for IHE to exist is to get rid of optionality, um, you know, and and yet we have you know four or five different ways of of doing a patient lookup, and and they're all just different, you know, technology stacks. Um, I think the expectation is that uh, PDQM can be just an API for those who want to use Fire to to search, and that the actual uh, uh, patient uh, directory, the repository of patient identities, um, can serve up multiple uh, tech, multiple APIs. So. Um, it is very possible for that for one server to support a V2 query, a V3 query, a, a PDQM query. Uh, we have tried to make sure that the the minimal requirements that we have um, are are compatible across them. Now, clearly, you know something like Dollar Match, which is is new. Um, uh, does kind of look to enable a server to be you know, adding intelligence, adding algorithms that quite possibly in the V2 space, um, it wasn't obvious that you could have done that. But in the V2 space, you could have done that as well. Um, uh, so I, I think that's the expectation that I see is that uh, servers, which are products vendors produce, can support multiple fire, uh, multiple IHE profiles as APIs to their functionality, their value. Thank you for the answer. Yeah, it it it, it is a good point. Uh, you know, we would we would love to be able to say you know there shall be nothing else, but you know. Thank you for the question. Any more questions? I was visiting the IHA uh, website and in the other uh, domains, the documentation is uh, with PDF documents. Will they also change to your version? Yeah, that's very dependent on resource availability. Um, <laughs> with the, the I mean the one of the reasons why ITI was able to convert is that we had uh, available resources within the committee um, and people who you know were were related to uh, those who were on the committee who were willing and and motivated to do it um, uh, the the front page of all of our domains are now up on profiles.ihe.net in HTML form. So our technical uh, writer who is responsible for overall uh, last step of publishing is, is trying to do that. Um, Radiology does have some implementation guide authored uh, works using FHIR. Um, in fact, is there one who's using FHIR R5 because there's some imaging uh, selection resource that only showed up in R5. Um, but this question of will the others convert their technical framework like we did um, is probably far more a question for each of those domains as to whether they have resources available. It was it was difficult. Are there more questions? Uh, 
I have another question, a general question. Um, I was wondering how you consider to archive all the implementation guide, all the FIRE implementation guide. How, how the specification is archived? Yes, please. Ah. Uh, Oliver, did you want to show this? You probably have screen capability. Walk uh, through where the versions are, or if you want me to take, I can. I can try it, no problem. Uh, one moment. Oh, um, the, can you see my screen? Yep. Uh, yeah, you're showing. So the technical framework itself is not versioned because this is considered as final text and it shouldn't have um, any changes. But what is versions are all the trial implementation guides. And when we, for example, go to the MHD profile, you see here on every implementation guide, so this is not uh, uh, this is a feature of each implementation guide. You see here directory of published versions, and then you have the history. So the whole um, you, you you see which publication sequence on which date, which version, and what the description is. Um, um, uh, yes, yes, I, I understand. I, I know that, but my question was not exactly this one. Uh, okay. What? Okay. What I was wondering is, um, you know, um, as um, as a national organization, we have to archive um, our documents. Um, this is a legal. Um, requirement mm -hmm. and um, the format that I know uh, for archiving documents is a PDF A. So I was wondering how um, in the context of a FIRE implementation guide, which is a web application, how can I archive, archive this? Do you, do you understand my question? I mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. And and, and I, I recognize the the current state of the art in um, in regulations that that state of the art needs to change. Um, uh, you could, if you wish, use your browser capability or use some tool to uh, take an implementation guide and produce a uh, PDF of it. But there are so many technical artifacts within an implementation guide that that PDF would. Uh, be uh, impossible to to read it would be impossible to uh, uh, understand each um, um, and, and actually uh, uh, um, each of the, uh, the the links on the far right hand side here there is one of those that allows you to download a zip of the full publication um, so that's what we offer is that you can download a zip of the full publication and put it into your archive uh, however you want. It is HTML, which is an open standard. Um, so, uh, you know, I think there there needs to be uh, some recognition that HTML is a, a publication mechanism. Um, it's far more uh, supported than PDF even. OK, thank uh, you and, very much. OK, yeah, thank and, you. and unfortunately, the, the same answer is given to the technical framework. Um, you know, if you need uh, XDSB volume one and the, the transactions available in a in a in a PDF, um, you would use the browser print to PDF capabilities on each of those pages and you have them. But um, uh, we can't continue to provide the benefits of HTML publication while being held up by the the limitations of PDF. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. We have the same discussion here in Switzerland too. Uh, 
and uh, I think slowly it is shifting. So we are at least for some implementation guides, content implementation guides, we are now ready from the law side to reference the IG publications. And we have still some which we have to convert to PDF. So, but hopefully it's changing towards the implementation guide version. There is um, there is a an available uh, historic publication of the technical framework as well. Um, so Oliver, if you go back to the ITI page, at the very bottom um, is gives you instructions on how you can um, gain access to previous revisions of the technical framework. It's really previous revisions of the website, so it includes all uh, of the uh, HTML uh, publications, but um, uh, we do for uh, historical purposes where people need to be able to see what was the difference between version uh, you know, 14 of the technical framework and current. Um, this is all managed within GitHub, um, so we leverage the uh, functionality of GitHub and we tag each update to the website. Uh, I see a question in the chat asking, is there a list of the profiles that are ready to be tested in um, IHE? Uh, so Gazelle has that list, um, but it's also anything that's in uh, trial implementation or final text. Uh, Uncle, do you see it when you register or is the list public available through Gazelle? Uh, sorry, which list? The uh, list available of the profiles profile. that can uh, be tested at the connect.on. When you, yes, when you Ah, it's available from. Oh, maybe I can share my screen and show you. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you need an account in Gazelle for sure because it's only published in Gazelle. And okay, so from testing, testing session scope, uh, you have all the profiles. You can filter by domain. And you can also see, um, so is a view for the administrator, but you will um, see anyway uh, for each profile what's its status. So we have started uh, reviewing the registration, so we now know that some profiles are already testable and some uh, for some other we are not sure yet. So here you have the list of all the ITI profiles that are open for registration and you can also see who has already registered and for which options. So that's under testing, testing session scope. And that's public as long as you are. Ah, that's not public, but everybody can sign up in Gazelle. So that's almost public. Does it answer the question? Like. Stavros has asked it in the chat. I hope. <laughs> Any more questions? I think we uh... no, do we? We have overwhelmed them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you still have till the end of this month of February 29th. For sure, we might be able to welcome newcomers, but. Um, and later, um, latest registration, but. Um, it would be good that by the end of February, we have most of the systems registered so we know exactly what you want to test. And if there's a gap in the registration, we can 
try to seek partners um, for you. Um, so um, do not hesitate to. So I put my the email in in the chat. Uh, so if you have um, questions uh, regarding the registration, um, yeah. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Oliver and John, for this uh, very uh, good uh, session and overview. Uh, we will post the recording uh, in the coming days, and the slides will be uh, disseminated uh, through the all as well. Excellent. So, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.